there are conditions for worship and there are pillars for worship. Every single worship we do, there are two conditions for it and there are three pillars for it. The two conditions, of course, al-ikhlas wal mutaba'ah. Every worship you conduct, you must be sincere. You only want the reward from Allah and no one else. And there must be mutaba'ah. You must do that worship in accordance to the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these are the conditions of worship. Then there's something else called the pillars of worship. And they are three. The first of them is the love of Allah. That's a pillar of worship. Every single worship you conduct, whether you pray or fast or read Quran or dhikr or istighfar or any worship you do, there's pillars. Without these pillars, the worship is gone. It is invalid. The first pillar is mahabbatullah, that you love Allah Azza wa You love to worship Him. You are pleased with this. And you worship Him willingly, not forcefully, willingly. And there is no limit to how much you love Allah Azza wa Jal. Your love for Allah should only increase and increase and increase. Every day work on your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the first pillar. The second pillar of every worship is the fear of Allah. You should fear that perhaps your worship and the good deed you did might be rejected. And there is a limit to the fear of Allah. There is a limit to it. If you fear Allah more than required, that would lead to hopelessness. You would lose hope in Allah. You will begin to lose hope in Allah's mercy and forgiveness. And then the third pillar is hope in Allah. Billah. You must have hope in Allah whenever you're conducting any form of worship. Hope, hope that this deed is accepted and that Allah Azza wa Jal would reward you for it. Hope you must assume good of Allah Azza wa Jal when you conduct any type of worship. And also, Billah. hope in Allah, there is a limit to it. If a person goes extreme in their hope in Allah Azza wa Jal and hoped in Allah Azza wa Jal so much that he ignored and neglected the fear of Allah, that would lead to carelessness. And a person will not care about whether Allah rejected his deed or not. And he would not care about Allah's punishment and the hellfire. And a person will begin to commit sins and not care. So you see, subhanAllah, these are the three pillars of worship. Loving Allah, fearing Allah, hoping in Allah. And from among the three, it is the love of Allah that has no limit. Love Allah as much as you can. Increase, keep going every single day. But the fear of Allah, there's a limit to it. If you go extreme in your fear of Allah, Azza wa Jal, you become a, 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 what happens? You lose hope. You'll lose hope in Allah's mercy. And if you go extreme in your hope in Allah, and you just hoped in Allah and never feed him, that is dangerous as well. There is a limit because what happens, you become careless and you'll fall into sin and you will not care at all. Well, ulama, rahimahumullah, they said, the one who worships Allah only out of love and they neglect the fee and the hope in Allah, such a person is a zindiq, a munafiq, is a hypocrite. And the one who worships Allah only fearing him, doesn't worship him out of love and out of hope in his reward and paradise, just worships him because he fears him. Such a person is a haruri, a khariji from among al khawarij, a deviated sect and a misguided sect. And whoever worshipped Allah, hoping only out of hope, hoping in his reward and his paradise, yani the one who worships Allah out of hope, so he doesn't fear him, doesn't love him, then such a person is a murjit. Such a person is a murjit. So in other, and this is another misguided, deviated sect. So whoever worships Allah with these three pillars, loving Allah, fearing Allah, fear of Allah, hope in Allah Azza wa Jal, has completed and perfected his worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as al-ulama rahimahumullah, they mentioned that this is like a bird with two wings. The head of the bird is loving Allah. So love of Allah that's the first thing in your heart. And then the two wings, one of them is the fee of Allah and the other one is hope in Allah Azza wa Jal. And this bird cannot fly unless it has all these three things, the two wings and the head. And so you too, you're perfect. Your worship cannot be complete, cannot be perfect 
and it cannot be complete and it will not ascend to Allah Azza wa Jal unless it has these three pillars. The head, which is your love for Allah Azza wa Jal whenever you conduct a worship, and then the two wings, and that is your fee of Allah Azza wa Jal and your, and your hope in Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And these three manners, the pillars of worship, are found in the very beginning of the Quran, in the first three ayat of Surah Al Fatiha. Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Alhamdulillah. This implies the love of Allah because Alhamd is to praise Allah out of love. You see, praising Allah without love, that's called thana. That's called thana. You know, uh, I might love a watch. So I, I, I praise a watch. I might praise a watch. If I praise a watch, doesn't necessarily mean I love the watch. If I praise a watch, that's called thana. So the one who just praises Allah without loving him, that's thana. Alhamd is to praise Allah out of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen implies the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the first pillar of worship. And then Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, it implies hope in Allah Azza wa Jal because he's the most merciful. So we have hope in his mercy and that he'll grant us his mercy in this life and in the hereafter. Umaliki Yawmiddin, this ayah, implies the fee of Allah Azza wa Jal. As you read Ma'aliki Yawmiddin, the owner of the day of recompense, you remember the day of judgment and the horrors that happen on that day and the people will be resurrected. Hufatan Uratan, Ghurlan Buhma, people will be resurrected barefooted, naked, uncircumcised, poor, Buhma, poor, they don't own anything. And Aisha radiallahu anha was so concerned about the men and women looking at each other and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to her, the matter is greater than people looking at each other. So when you remember these meanings, as you read Maliki Yawmiddin, that leads to the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. And so these are the three pillars of every worship. We worship Allah out of love for Allah, and we worship Him, and we have fear of Allah Azza wa Jal that our deed might be rejected. And we worship him, having hope in him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he accept our deeds and he grant us the paradise because of our deeds and our efforts.